try to match personalities with the characters and have wing flaps that would sound appropriate to the bug. And so we looked out in the real world for a lot of different source material. Most of the time, real bug wing flaps wouldn't be interesting because they're too small and the important thing for a bug's life is to hear the world from the perspective of these small, tiny little insects. So for most of the movie, we tried to be bigger than life with the wing flaps. Dot's wings had to sound light, small, and like her, cute. So we blew on the edge of a playing card while waving it back and forth. To that airy sound, we added the funny sound of a kazoo. These sounds were pitched up and put in the scene. did I tell you about trying to fly? Not until my wings grow in. For the scene when Dot finally learns to fly, escaping from Thumper, I really got to wail on the kazoo. For Princess Ada's wings, we put together the sound of a fly buzz and the soft sound of paper towels flapping. Flick has returned. He's back? And he's accompanied by savage insects. He wasn't supposed to actually find someone. By the way, the sound of this ant group movement is the sound of a herd of cattle. <laughs> We did record a dragonfly that we found on the lake here at Skywalker Ranch, recorded really close up, which made a huge and amazing sound. For the sound of grasshoppers moving, we added the disgusting and not cheap sound of cracked crab. And the sound of one of those fun plastic kid straws bending. And for the signature sound of Hopper's antennas twitching when he got a little angry, we used the awful sound of fingernails on a blackboard. Here's it all together. These grasshoppers come in, we always had this image of the gang coming in, like um, Hell's Angels coming into a small Midwestern town, and just absolutely wreaking havoc, riding their motorcycles through cafes. Sometimes we wanted to give the sense of the grasshoppers being part of a bad motorcycle gang. So, we would record motorcycles. but mixed with the sound of our dragonfly. You ants have a nice summer. Let's ride! You'd never guess, but for the flying squadron of grasshoppers, we used a flying squadron of airplanes. In this case, Stearmans. Then mix in the frightening sound of a huge swarm of bees. And you get...
You don't like Thumper? Leave her alone! It's interesting, Thumper's voice. Originally, we were thinking about casting an actor to play him, but um, at one point I thought uh, it might be more interesting to give him more of an animal sound. So Gary Rydstrom actually created his voice uh, from a bunch of different chimps and apes. They, they flew down to a primate research center in, uh, in Texas and recorded a bunch of apes, and he created uh, the voice of Thumper from that. That's probably why it's so disturbing. <laughs> it's really successful. <laughs> Dim had the sound like a flying helicopter since he was so big compared to the others, and amazingly enough, we achieved the flop 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 classic sound of a helicopter simply by flapping bubble pack together. But for dim pass-bys, we had to add the real sound of a Huey helicopter. Sometimes the real thing works the best, and we did record real flies caught in a windowsill. Add to that the dialogue, in this case performed by the directors, Andrew Stanton and John Lasseter. No! Harry, no! Don't look at the light! I can't help it. It's so beautiful! For the sound of these overworked mosquito waiters, we recorded real mosquitoes in a beaker, sounding like they were talking at the entomology lab at Berkeley. By picking the most interesting phrases from these mosquitoes, you can give them a lot of personality. For the super fast movements of Afi, we recorded a kid's toy whistle that made this wonderful varoom sound and sped it up. Listen carefully, this is quick. Ladybug, ladybug, fly away home. Yeah. Not so tough now, are you? We gotta sweeten the deal. To make Francis the Ladybug's wings goofy and a little insubstantial, I simply recorded my own mouth flapping for a liquidy flying effect. P.T., what's the point? Not now, Slim! What's the point of going out there? They'll only laugh at me. That's because you're a clown! And Slim, the walking stick, has the sound of a wooden rocking chair creaking for his movement. When a reel of 35 millimeter film rolls off a projector and twirls, it makes a great flap, 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 flap sound that we used for the firefly wings. Pretty easy sound to get at a film studio. J. 
Gypsy's wings, which have to be a little bit frightening, are made from the sound of an incoming bullet whoosh. Oh, look at this, look at this, this is great, look. Oh, my dicker! Ah, uh, guys, I've been looking all over for you! Chitty Flea has no wings, but he needs to make a doink sound. And that was simply made by twanging a rubber band. and then cutting that sound a thousand times. Heimlich finally gets his wings at the end of the movie, and a big element of Heimlich are water balloons. And also balloon squeaks. And as a sound designer, I get to play with my food and use the sound of jello for the wetness of Heimlich's wings. So here's the last wing flap. Now, what, what we wanted to do is, is to um, stage this sequence like, you know, uh, like a giant evil dinosaur or, or, a, or a monster, a huge monster. But typically, you know, in, in films, when they portray something that's really huge, they move it very slowly. But this is actually a small little bird, like a sparrow or something, and they move really, really fast. And we said, you know, we want to get exactly that same fast, fast motion, but the size of a Tyrannosaurus yeah. Rex. And the other great thing about this is uh, the, the work that Gary Rydstrom did, the contrast between, you know, when we get far away, it's just this cute little bird chirping, but... He's done the sound for, for both Toy Story and A Bug's Life. And that contrast, he saw the potential immediately that when we get far away, it's just this cute little bird. And you get up close and he mixed in all these dinosaur sounds along with the bird. It was a horse breathing for its breathing, and I didn't debark it, but there was a dog that was debarked, I recorded. So that's the debarked dog. This is a goose that we recorded. It was really mad at me. It got really close, and he would do... Little Elvis uh, curl here. Watch his lip. Right there. It's very cool. This is a friend of mine who came to visit me in the studio and made this sound with his mouth. That's a guy. I don't know... And this is a walrus. So to make the raptor scream, we're going to mix it with the high element you're going to hear coming up, which is the baby dolphin underwater. That's a teenage boy dolphin. So this is how it goes together. The 
first layer of the T-Rex is not a vocal, it's really his feet. We recorded redwood trees getting chopped down. And then whale. I didn't get much vocals from a whale they liked, but their blowhole made good breathing. The alligator, low frequency, really low. Line, which I used for the attack. I tried not to use this, but I had to. This is too good. Just a little. The little cute baby elephant and the high pitched scream that it made. See how that blends with the rest. bird's wing flaps were made by going to the swimming pool here at Skywalker Ranch and recording the patio umbrellas. Opening and closing. Fast traffic buys in Bug City were made from World War II era P-51 airplanes, P-38 airplanes, and hummingbirds from my backyard. Here's a scene when just about every character seems to be flying and in addition it's raining. 